here's the thing. It, it's winter time. So, you know, give me a break on the costume. You guys know how difficult it is to work all winter on these freaking bikes wearing normal clothing. And I know that the people that are sponsoring these videos now are like, what is this guy doing? Well, what I'm doing is working on bikes in comfort. Okay, everyone, it's Adam here. Uh, today, we're gonna be installing some awesome lights. So uh, obviously the D7s, they're awesome. They're gonna stay on there. Uh, what we have today is these awesome D2s from Denali. Um, now, before we go through the install process, I wanted to kind of talk about these a little bit more. So what you see here, they look different, right? Well, this is uh, Denali's tri-optics setup where um, with a lot of LEDs, you have to pick. Do you want a 10 degree pencil pattern or a uh, wide 20 to 15 or 20 degree pattern? Um, with tri-optic, you don't have to choose. You have these two lenses that basically will do a narrow and a wide beam. So when you pair them together, you have a really nice balance between the two beams. And you kind of want to do it where the wide beam, if you're in the US uh, and you're on the right-hand side of the road, the wide beam is going to be pointing towards the deer on the right-hand side of the road, and the pencil beam is going to be pointing um, straight forward. Um, you know, so that'll be towards oncoming traffic. You're not lighting up the whole left side of the lane slash oncoming traffic lane. Um, now, the Denali D2s actually come with white bulbs. Uh, or clear lenses, I should say. And uh, I added the amber lenses, and the reason is pretty clear. Um, well, pretty amber. <laughs> um, basically, the plan with this bike is we've already got an LED headlight from BMW, and we already have the D7s putting out like 15,000 lumens or something. Um, these aren't going to be on ever. Uh, and I, I mean that to be a little dramatic, but basically it's only going to be on when the high beams are on. So normal operation, this will be a normal headlight, these will be running at 10 to 25% power in orange to allow people to see me or well, see Heather. And then when I go high beam, these go 100% and these go 100%. And that's the way we're gonna do this to make it um, where a lot of visibility when you're around town on the interstate and then when you're at night, lonely road by yourself, just you and the deer and the turkey, uh, you can go high beam and get the full power of the uh, system. We're gonna be mounting them on the forks. So, um, if you have an F750 or F850 GS, you're gonna utilize this fork tube light mount. Here is the uh, product, it's the 39 to 49 millimeter. This, uh, right here, this fork is right at 49.5 millimeters, or 38.9, depending on how you measure it with the caliper. Um, I initially had bought the 40 to 60 millimeter way too large, so we're gonna be changing it to 39 to 49 millimeter, and here's where you, uh, you can mount it. Uh, below the triple tree or above the center there, wherever you want to put it. Um, they're showing here, if you have um, standard forks like these, you want to put them for some reason up here. That's too high. But with uh, these forks, you're going to put them down here. Basically, you don't want to put them on the actual uh, fork itself, which makes sense. Or, uh, on the, I'm sorry, on the uh, metal part of the shock. So let's go ahead and take these apart. Yeah, these are for conventional forks. So you've got here a collection of various uh, bolts. So there's your uh, figure one. Two, three, four and five. Let's, uh, let's first start off by simply just doing a test fit here to make sure these actually work on the bike. So we've got our left hand side here, this is all cleaned up. So we have both sides here. You want to use the. Uh, you want to make sure that your um, your bolt here is on the exterior. Like that. Yeah, we like that. Okay. We're not using the um, the permanent Loctite. That's definitely not going anywhere. On your D2s, you're going to be removing this right here. And you're also going to be removing this here. Now, take this off as well. You're going to use the included 
bolt that came with it, with the uh, actual fork mount right there. And you're going to lock this into place, which doesn't seem like that much, but that's what it says to do. I'm gonna also put a little dab of Loctite on that. Not really much space to do any more with it, but there you have it. We're gonna mount this straight down like that. nut and washer for the bottom. Doesn't have to do a little bit of dab of Loctite, although the Nolly will probably tell me that I'm wrong on that one. And this locking nut utilizes a size 10 socket. So we'll get that started. Don't forget your washer. So for this, you can... Uh, on the bottom here. Get that started. All right. Now you're gonna wanna leave a little bit of space cause you wanna be able to keep a little bit of tightness. You wanna keep this a little loose enough where you can move it around. Um, cause what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to take this out, put it against a, a, a brick wall and move the light up, down, left, right in order to make sure you have the right uh, beam pattern before you go back and really tighten these down. Let's do the other side. I'm giving you guys a slightly different angle this time. The other clamp out. And I'm gonna be totally quiet and do this without talking and speed it up. And you can do on YouTube, you can go half speed if you wanna see how this is done uh, for yourself. And there you have it. You've got your uh, your D2s mounted at your forks. You see they're uh, basically the same height. Uh, you'll need to do your adjustments after the fact. Um, you know, get it out there, put it against uh, in front of your garage door, or in front of kind of a flat, plain wall. Uh, you want to be sitting on the bike, aka loading the suspension up. Um, make sure that you're not aimed too high or too wide or too low, and uh, engage high beam. Cycle through all of your different modes and adjust both your uh, D7s and your D2s. But, um, so uh, as you noticed in this video, we didn't do any wiring and we're gonna be doing the wiring in the next video. And so um, I will uh, go through that in a separate video and that's gonna be wiring everything up into the CanSmart controller. Thanks for watching.